Well, I heard something a little unusual. I haven't heard much about Jabba's, you know, save the house yard sale, you know. What I did hear about it, I found pretty interesting. I won't say who you are. I won't say who you are. But he told me, he says, uh, I went and subbed Jabba's channel just so I could get notifications. You know, see when he was doing something to have a good laugh. And I saw he was doing his live. It was early in the morning, he said. You know, ready for his grand opening of his yard sale. He says, Brian, it looked like he was in the middle of a Toys R Us going out of business sale. All kids' toys and shit. I mean, that's what this guy blew all his fucking money on, hoarding for years. Kids' fucking toys from Hot Wheels to fucking water pistol guns. You fucking name it. All kid shit. He just kept buying more and more and more and more. I know some people will do that when they get a real good buy on something dirt cheap. And they have, I don't know if I want to call it a business, you know, right down the street here. They have the Kilburn Mill outlets. Quite a few businesses in there. It was a factory at one time, a sewing factory that employed something like 1,500 people. My grandmother and a couple of my aunts worked there, sewing machine operators, stitches. They made kids' pajamas and ladies' dresses going back in the 50s and 60s. And then when all the business went, you know, offshore, the uh, building was abandoned. They used it for warehouse storage. And anyway, it got renovated a few years back. In fact, up on the left side, they have a, ro a rooftop restaurant and outside club. Bands play there. You know, I, I never went, but at night, late at night, we could hear the music going, you know, see the lights on. A lot of people used to go there. And down on the lower level, they have a flea market. I've gone there a couple of times. A lot of junk, a few interesting things here or there. There's one guy in particular with this elderly black gentleman. He was fucking funny. Uh, he didn't have anything I really wanted to buy. But I used to kind of hang out with him 10, 15 minutes and just talk with him and his wife. He was a, he was a real nice guy and his, and his wife. I probably should go there and buy something, even if I don't need it. Just because the guy's so nice, you know, I want to try to do something for him. You know, I am going to do that this week. You know, I've encountered him twice there. I don't go there often. And we see what's there, you know. I had a cousin that he died at the age of 41 due to his reckless lifestyle with drinking and drugs. And uh, he was a big flea market guy. He rented a booth up in Taunton. He used to be the old Taunton Greyhound dog track. And every Sunday, they had an indoor and then outdoor in the park and what. And, you know, you got people there selling, you know, 12 pack of white tube socks, you know, for five bucks, t-shirts, you know. <laughs> this, that, the other thing, you know, sunglasses, fake gold jewelry, knockoff Nike sneakers, you know, your usual flea market stuff, you know. And he had a booth there, and they paid their rent. And he, he actually did okay. He'd scrounge around here and there, and then when eBay came along, he tried making a living on eBay, you know. He'd actually go around on trash collection. You would be surprised some of the shit people throw out. I had an uncle. Uh, I mentioned, I hate saying Uncle Tony, my Uncle Anton, he's the one that got me involved with the Tasca family when I was seven years old. One of his best, best friend was Bobby's old man. And uh, <laughs> my other uncle was Brother Joe. Worked for the city, trash collection at the dump. He said, you'd be surprised. The shit the trash collectors would find people were throwing out, stuff that was almost like brand new, you know? in very good condition, and they'd, they'd keep it. City would let them, you know, take whatever the fuck they wanted. What's the put in the landfill, or what's the burn in the incinerator, you know? And you would be amazed at some of the shit people throw out. From electronics, TVs, radios, you name it, bicycles. 
that were very, very good. They just didn't want it, and they threw it away. And he used to do that. My late cousin, you know, he used to sell shit on eBay from home. And then on the weekend, he was doing his flea market thing until he shot that one too many bags of heroin one day, and that was it for him, you know? So there are people that they, they will buy and sell things, but they're selling as they're buying. They're not just hoarding and hoarding and hoarding and hoarding. You know, some people call themselves collectors. Well, collectors are, you know, I think are very thinly disguised hoarders. But in a lot of cases, they can afford to do it. They're not going to lose their home, not pay their bills because of the fact that they're collecting things, you know. We have stamp collectors, coin collectors, car collectors. You know, I went to, uh, when I was living in Scottsdale for those three years, that's where I met Auntie Billy. I had friends in Phoenix, and I used to walk back and forth. And so I met her out there. The condo I had was not that far from where they held the Barber Jackson. I went. I wasn't going to buy anything. But I went looked around, you know. That's when the resto mod thing was, excuse me, hold on. Okay, sorry. I felt some hiccups coming on. That's when the resto mod thing was like kind of new. And and I saw a lot of older people, retired businessmen, you know, professionals, lawyers, doctors, with what you call disposable money. Very well off. They could afford to go there and buy a car for $130,000 and stick it in a garage with five or six other you know, cars, you know, six-figure cars, you know, sitting in their fucking garages. They can afford to do it, you know. On here, though, I get crack up, you know. Oh, he's like, when I see his car collection, it's pretty much a fucking junkyard. They got sitting in their fucking yard, no wheels, no tires, sitting on the ground, hoods up, no engine, they're all fucked up. To me, that's not a car collection, it's a junkyard, you know. I guess people have their own perception of what a car collector is. YouTube is really throwing things way the fuck out of whack in the car community, as far as I'm concerned. Get mad at me all you want, but it's just a lot of fucking junk men on here. You know, calling themselves car collectors, calling themselves car engine builders, car restorers. They can call themselves whatever the fuck they want. They're all fucking junk men, as far as Uncle Brian is concerned, okay? You know, and you see these guys, but they can afford to do it. You know what I mean? I got a little bit of money, but not that much. But I can afford to go buy a car for $150,000 and pay for it cash the way they can. With what I have, I could drain out my bank. What would I would need more than that? I have enough good credit. I could easily get a loan and go buy that. And now, now I'm in debt for a car that, what the fuck am I going to do with it? These cars don't get driven. They're like, you know, something for them to look at. But they can afford to do that. They can afford to do that, you know. My late cousin used to buy up a lot of shit, you know, but he would sell it. He'd sell it on eBay, he'd sell it on a Sunday afternoon up at the flea market at the old Taunton Dog Track. He was able to sustain himself. He, did, he never went in debt because of it. He never, you know, was got kicked out of his apartment for not paying his rent or had his gas and electric shut off. Or, you know, they didn't have gas money to put in his car, his insurance was canceled. He, was, he managed to continue to live and do this. And when you went in his house, it wasn't a fucking hoarder's paradise. There'd be a few things there, but every time you'd pop in there, most of the stuff there was gone. He had sold it. it off eBay or at a swing market, and now more stuff came in. It was constantly being rotated. Jabba just hoarded shit for fucking years. You know, his house, the little bits you've seen of him in rooms, he was surrounded by shit. Surround, you know? You could barely move in there. And that shit was there for years and years. And he kept buying more. He kept buying more Hot Wheels cars right up to the point of where he's having a fucking yard sale. He continued to buy fucking Hot Wheels cars. With all this shit going on with the house, he continued to buy shit. And now at the last minute, decides he's going to sell it. <laughs> I'm kind of curious, you know. I wonder if anybody did show up there. He's, he's in an off-the-beaten path, path place there. You know, not a high-traffic zone. People are going to be seeing, hey, look, you know. I don't know how that turned out. Uh... I can imagine somebody going up, what do you want for that, and drop it. Oh, this boombox, $300, you're out of your fucking mind. I can imagine if anyone did show up, Jabba probably tried to start a fucking argument with them. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, fuck you, fat ass. Fuck you. You know? 
I maybe would run into the wrong guy that showed up there. Jarvis started running his mouth like a bucket, popped in the fucking fat face and knocked on his fat ass for being rude, which is what he is, you know, rude and obnoxious. I bet that would have been a sight, huh? But anyway, now I'll get to what I heard. And this is something I've never heard before. This is, yeah, I watched a little bit of it, B. And then suddenly it went black. He said it wasn't that far into it, maybe like a little over a half hour or something. And it suddenly went black, he says. And I know Job has done that before when he ends his videos. He just sets it to private and then it goes black and a video set to private. From what I understand, people have told me. Set to private. He says it went black and I'm expecting to see that. And what I saw was video unavailable due to violation of YouTube community standards. He said, what? YouTube took down his video, took down his live stream. So I asked him, I says, what kind of community standards did he violate? What was he doing? I almost wanted to say, what did he do, fought too much? <laughs> they found that a little too offensive now. He says, I don't know, Brian, but that's what came up. You know? Video unavailable, removed for violation of YouTube community standards. And that's it, and I heard Jabra hasn't done anything since. I think this was Saturday. I heard about this Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, we were about to, uh, we were getting set to go out. We had a few things to do, came in, and then I had to wait for Auntie Billy. Get done in the shower, in the bathroom. I grabbed the phone, I was talking with Will for a little bit, and then I had to get set. I think I mentioned it to Will. I said, Dad, that was kind of strange. He said, yeah, Brian, I don't know what he violated, but he did something that YouTube, and I, I laughed. You know, kind of funny job, huh? You are the one that was threatening people. You're going to have YouTube take down their videos. You're going to get YouTube to shut down their channel. You're going to get a lawyer and sue people. And you're the one that got shut down by YouTube. <laughs> Ain't that a fucking blip, huh? Okay. Have a great day, people. Have fun to stay safe.